it was like country. I mean, country, country. And all along uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Way now, which was 27th Street then, was just wooden houses. Either the doors was wide open, or people sitting on the porch in the rocking chairs, drinking iced tea out of the jars, and um, then the church. You could hear the music. You didn't have to go to church. You just sit right there. You live right next door to the church, and the next house, it was all the way down four or five blocks. So you sit there and listen. I'm Victoria B. Brown. I was born in Georgia in 1939 to Mamie Lee and Eulis Brinson. And I was the oldest girl of 17 living siblings. And my dad was a farm worker, a migrant farm worker. And we had a farm, and, and uh, we was raised up on a farm, a little place called Waycross, Georgia, which was in the backside of the pine trees. After so many years, we end up leaving Georgia because my father was uh, very upset because he could not express himself and he could not um, do as he thought he should be able to do. So he decided that we would leave. First, we moved to Clearwater, Florida, from Georgia. And that, that was somewhere late 40s. And I think at that time, I was 10 years old. After I was um, 16, I ended up going away to find a job. And I moved from Clearwater to Sarasota, which was more like 60, 1960. I ended up moving into a rooming house across the street from uh, Humphrey Drugstore. Uh, Mr. Neil Humphrey had, uh, was the first drugstore right on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Way, right down the corner, of, right walking distance from here, where King's Market is now. Yeah, they did a lot for this town. They took care of a lot of the people that needed medication, didn't have money, and Mr. Humphrey used to give that to them. But Miss Humphrey, what she would end up doing was making sure that we end up having something to eat. The elder ladies, they would help, they would cook and help you. They would watch out for you. And the other lady was that really spent almost 24 hours looking after the younger people, young ladies and everything, it was Mary Emma Jones. She had the taxi cab service. She had the restaurant. And uh, wherever you had to go, if you had 50 cents, it was okay. If you didn't have it, she would take you anyway, you know. And she ended up doing that for almost everybody. They'd be looking for her in that car. And here she comes, you know. So, And she'd have full of people sitting in their laps and everything, you know. So she would get you home. I sort of thought that I was still in Georgia <laughs> because in Newtown, I'm thinking we're in Florida. So it should be different. I come all the way from Georgia with all the friction and all the segregation and all the the, you know, you get treated so badly, you know. So you come to Sarasota, and the streets are mud, <laughs> you know, no, you know, mud, <laughs> really mud. But it was the same thing, you know, totally segregated. You couldn't, you had to stay in the black area. And I remember Publix, you could go in Publix, you was not allowed to shop at Publix. You wouldn't believe that, but it's true. And that, I remember that, and also, um, I'm trying to think. Well, I couldn't afford to go in Cheney's anyway. But I did one year. I would say to myself, I said, one of these days I'm going to go in and get something. So I passed by there one day. They had this 101-pound watermelon now. So I ended up buying it and carried it down to the Robert Taylor. And that was my first time giving something to the kids. We took a picture, and it's almost faded out, so I hope I find it so you can at least see it. We had everything. We had to have everything out here. We had the TV repair, shoe repair, and um, Bud's Barbershop. 
and then we had the um, it is fruit stand it was a big place covered that whole corner of 24th Street all the way around all the way around he had fish market he had all kinds of vegetables fruits and 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 uh, oh a little hair supply place and that's where everybody went it was called it is fruit stand and then we also had the garden we had the garden right there on Leon Martina Riley's house she was a teacher at Booker she had a big yard in the back so she would grow all kinds of vegetables and she had fruit trees and everything there and that helped a lot too because all the kids can come by free just get fruit and whatever your mom needed or something later on I end up spending a lot of time with all the people that's why I'm sort of sort of kept it together here in, here in Sarasota because there were several older ladies that I can go to their house and stay all evening everybody else was out or going to learners and spending the two dollars they had left so those ladies helped me out a lot and then Benjamin and Beulah McMillan which became my godparents uh, they sort of adopted me more or less so they had this apartment they was leasing out. We had a conversation, and he had said to her, he says, you see, this Vicky is trying to have something. You see, she's trying to do this. I was trying to find a place because I always lived in rooms, and I lived with a lady one time. I could only stay in the house as long as she was there. So I said, I've been there, done that. I said, that's why I'm doing what I do now is because I've been through all of these things that you're talking about. So when you're able, she said, you give us whatever it is. They didn't say how much. So whenever I got paid every two weeks, I'd come straight by their house, give them a little money, and go on. And I kept doing that and kept doing that. And guess what? Now I own the building, the same building I that they let me stay in, right on 24th Street. Mm -hmm. So I went all the way from there to that. It had not been for the Mike Millens and these people. I have no idea where I've been. And Hedy Floyd, Reverend Floyd and Hedy Floyd back then, they built the H.J. Uh, Floyd's nursing home. And so this lady would pick me up, take me to her house, do my hair, and bring me back. And so my godparents would pay for that, you know. So I thought that was so great, you know. So why do I want to go out with people who, who didn't love me? You know, they love me, you know, and I, and I knew that. And it just really touches my heart today because it's very hard to find someone that they say they care but to actually feel that they really care about you. And these people will help you get to wherever you need to go. You just have to keep it together and listen to what they have to say because they have a lot of wisdom there, oh goodness. That's why I picked up a lot of things I learned, you know. Then we spent most of our time at the uh, Miss Mary Emma Jones uh, restaurant it was on the corner of uh, Osprey, and you had the counter. You sit to the counter, you order it, she cook it. And whatever she's doing, she would come and sit, talk to you. It was just like having a good conversation with someone that just knew everything that you needed. Then we still had the Humphreys who had a ice cream parlor. And they would make hamburgers and uh, give them to you if you needed it. And all the time that I remember him, he was always helping someone with something they needed. And even now, I think about a lot of these things that we should be doing some of that now to help people along. But we need to care more, really show people that we really care.